If you have ever browsed the school's collection on dukas.ie, chances are that you have come across tunnels. Because I have, certainly. And I've often wondered what the obsession is in folklore with tunnels in Ireland. And some of the examples that I had come across were so ridiculous. And I mean no disrespect, they're just as ridiculous as all the references to the devil in German folklore. But I wanted to have a more systematic look at them because I had formed my opinions about these and possible explanations. But I thought you have to have more of these stories in more detail and put some numbers down and see what's actually there. So what I did was I searched for tunnel in the school's collection and there are 802 results for tunnel, 104 results for tunnels, the plural, and 553 results for underground passage. But I decided not to look at underground passage, just tunnel, because that's that was the word that had sprung out to me before. And I didn't look at all the 802 plus the 104 in the plural, but I thought I'd, I'll start with Kilkenny and uh, see how many I find there, and then move on to a different county of roughly the same size, where I can expect the same result the same number of tunnels and compare that because the demographic in Kilkenny is a bit different than in Monaghan and moved on to Monaghan then because I thought there's more of um, a planted culture or a planted history in Monaghan than in Kilkenny. Maybe the stories will be different. And then I also added Mayo. So I tried to track all these tunnels down on OpenStreetMap and I also used old ordnance or May maps and tried to locate them and put them on the map to see how long the tunnels are. Some are ridiculously long and to see what the truth is behind them. Are there actual tunnels there? Is there some factual explanation for these tunnels? Obviously, as is always the case in Ireland, I couldn't locate all of the townland names because some seem to have changed overall. There was one called Barnesfield, which now has an anglicized Irish version, which I won't even try to pronounce. It's something Gortna, and then the name for Barn in Irish. And I found that eventually because I thought, okay, Gortna, that means field off. And then I looked up the word for barn and yeah, because I had a suspicion. But anyway, I didn't find all of them. And then often it'll say the entrance into the tunnel is in Hobensfield. And I have no clue where Hobensfield is. Even if I find the townland, it's very little chance of finding Hobensfield or ever, any field name if they are not recorded. But the ones that I found, I put on the map, and I'll link that below. It's a U map, and you can click on them, and there's a link to the transcription or of the story and a link to the school's collection and some thoughts about why I think there are tunnels or why people might have thought there are tunnels there. And sometimes also the wrong townland is given. I think people didn't walk around with maps all the time, so they couldn't check, and it was in the vicinity, was the next townland over. So I sometimes it's a bit of guesswork on my part as well. It's not, not super scientific, but it's the best I could do. So I, I looked at the old Ordnance Survey maps on the HGV, the Historic Environment Bureau, to find the castles, ring forts, and possible suterans, which was my initial thought what they were, on the Historic Environment Viewer. And I made a spreadsheet for these three counties, so I read the text, tracked down the places, and I checked what certain keywords appear in the text to categorize these texts and give a context to the tunnel, so to speak. And I also added Kerry and Waterford to that spreadsheet, but I didn't try to track down all the tunnels for these counties. And the spreadsheet contains words like penal times, Dane, Sidden Treasure, and stuff like that. So I got some statistics, but none of these counties really had high enough numbers to be representative. As you can imagine, 802, let's say even if it's 906, considering the plural form, divided by 26. I must have missed out on some counties that had loads and loads. Kilkenny had the most, it had 27. Um, I also skipped some of the um, some instances where a tunnel was in the text, but it was clearly a modern tunnel. Like if it said the council built a tunnel here, I didn't use that because that's not really f- the folklore that we're looking for. Or if it was, there was one example near Castle Comer in County Kilkenny where it had to do with the colliery, so with mining, and I didn't include that because I presume that it's really a tunnel there because the miners built the tunnel. So there's not really a lot of mythology or something around that um, story. 
So I skipped those ones. What were they used for? What were these tunnels used for? What's their origin? Um, because I started with Kilkenny, there were many stories connected with penal times, and I'll start with that. The first story is from the Black Abbey in Kilkenny. There are actually three accounts of the same location or of the same story in the school's collection, but I chose this version because of its wording, and hopefully you'll get what I mean. And my friend Dan read it for me because it needed an authentic Irish accent, which I still haven't mastered, so I haven't. So give it up for Dan. Long ago in Kilkenny, there was a woman who was delivering milk to the monks, who was in hiding under the Black Abbey, and name was Thornton. The monks was hiding there because them English soldiers was on their trail. Their woman wanted money, and she did not know how to get it. She thought of a plan to get the money. She went to the soldiers and told them if they would give her five pound, she would tell them where the monks were. They gave her the money and asked her how to get there. She said she would spill the milk along until she would come to the flag that was covering the tunnel and said, let ye follow that and then you will have the monks. So that woman betrayed the monks for five pound. Thanks, Dan. Without much comment, I will follow that with a story from Goran Abbey, also in County Kilkenny. Once upon a time, the abbey that stands in Goran was occupied by monks. The Cromwellians wanted to kill the monks, but they were too cunning for that. To enter the abbey, they had to climb a ladder, which they drew in after them. They had a tunnel which passed from the abbey to the old castle, which is now called Ballyshane. One day, as Cromwell was passing through Goran, he met a woman who supplied the monks with milk. He asked her how he would get into the abbey, and she said she would show him the way if he would pay her fifty pounds. He agreed and gave her the money. She went and poured four gallons of milk, and as she was returning, she met Cromwell and his army. She told them to follow the trace of the milk. They did, and entering the abbey massacred the community of monks. I think what we can learn from that is that you can't trust your milkwoman. I find it curious that monks would have a milkwoman. First of all, would they not be self-sufficient? Second, as far as I know, monks were not very well known for their consumption of milk, much more so for drinking beer or ale. And doesn't a milkwoman require something like a creamery to be established for her to be delivering milk? I have no idea where this Hansel and Gretel-like use of milk to leave a trace came from, but I think there's definitely some underlying misogyny at play. You can't trust a woman, especially as a monk. To wrap that up, I have another story for you, this time from Celts in County Kilkenny, which also had a monastery or priory. The yos in this story are yeomen, which is constantly spelled wrong in the stories of the school's collection I encountered, but you can't hear that, of course. There was once a priest in Kells during the penal times, and he was working with the farmers so that the yos would not know him. One night, the yos came into Kells. A woman named Thornton betrayed the priest. The yos at once arrested him and put him to death. Huh, a woman named Thornton, you say? What a coincidence. There are still Thorntons in Kilkenny, especially in Ballyragget, and there was a 78-year-old Mrs. Thornton, Ellen Thornton, living on Abbey Street in the 1901 census which is of course quite a few years after these events allegedly took place. But maybe somebody had some beef with Mrs. Thornton and made her the villain of the story. I found her name, that's the one in the stories from the school's collection, found her name in the different accounts of that betrayal and her first name was Peg, so Margaret probably. There are many stories like that where monks go underground in two tunnels. Usually there's no more milk spilled over that matter. And it's usually in the countries with the tunnels being used by priests. Um, some actually might have been overgrown boreens mistaken for collapsed tunnels. I have an example of that later. It is impossible to locate now where these fields are without the field names and without knowledge of former mass paths. This is why it is so important to have them recorded somewhere. Let's have a look at some of the statistics. In this diagram, penal times can mean that this combination of words is mentioned in the text or in the heading of the story. It could also be penal laws or something to do with that time. Sometimes, if they just say priests were hiding or, or monks were hiding, I didn't add that into this category because there are also instances in the school's collection where 
priests and monks were hiding from the Vikings. And you can't deduct just because it says the monks were hiding in a tunnel that they were hiding from the Cromwellian soldiers or English soldiers or that it had something to do with penal times. There are no instances of that in County Mayo in the sample that I looked at because 60% of the tunnels are associated with ring forts in County Mayo and the ring forts are usually not associated with Cromwell or penal laws or the English soldiers. And that's why there are no occurrences in County Mayo for that topic. Doesn't mean that Cromwell didn't go to Mayo. The penal laws or penal times feature a lot in Kilkenny where there were more stories from an urban environment than in any of the other counties I looked at. That's why the number is so high there. And then also the same story three or four times in the school's collection and I counted each one as an occurrence. And as I said before, I had chosen Monaghan after Kilkenny because I was expecting more of a planted culture in the storytelling and I expected a different bias towards that topic or these keywords in the Monaghan stories. So these were the tunnels that were used because of penal times or fleeing from Cromwell, hiding from Cromwell or the English soldiers or the Yos. And sometimes there are also passages where there's no reason given at all tunnels where there is no reason given. They're just tunnels that connect A and B and there are passages to get from A to B. They don't really make for very good stories. All you get are field names and owners' names of fields, which I can't locate anyway, so I didn't pick an example from that category. Another category for what tunnels can be associated with are hidden treasure. And that's a very common theme with tunnels or underground structures. This either comes from monks hiding them from the Danes, whatever the Danes means, I'll get to that later on, or hiding it from the English. Not in the stories I encountered in this research, but I have come across it. It might be in the underground, where you, when you search for underground passage or just secret passage or something like that, which I didn't include in this. The treasure can also come from non-clerics, usually Irish noble families fleeing from Cromwell, uh, from their castles, and either losing their money along the way, or dumping it in a lake or a river or burying it or something like that. Or sometimes it is just buried gold where nobody knows who buried it. And the first story I have from that category is from Lister Lynn in County Kilkenny. There is money hidden in Maddox's field in Lister Lynn. There is a small rise in the field with an opening in it. This opening is the entrance to an underground passage where the treasure is hidden. A man from Lister Lynn entered the tunnel with the light to search for it, but a gale arose and quenched the light. He returned home and no man ever searched for the treasure since. Another example is from Ballyheeny in County Waterford. There are three or four leashes around here. It is said by some people that it was the fairies that made them. The most of them are round with the hole on top. It is said that the farmers used to put their kettle into them from the Danes. There is a tunnel from one lease to another, and the people used to go from one to the other. The biggest lease in Ireland is in Kilmore. There are a few more leases in Nogainaris, Coolba, and Craigs. A man dreamt that there was gold hidden in one of them, and he went to dig it. When he was digging, he saw a big bull coming to him and he ran away. I presume that these stories originate in actual gold or other treasures being found in bogs or when ploughing like the famous Tara brooch, lunar torques and other gold artifacts. Sometimes people might have found coins and other artifacts dug up by badgers or rabbits as well, and from thence the story spiraled out of control. It might have also had its origin in wishful thinking. If you think about how many times in these stories people went to dig for gold they dreamt about, often three nights in a row by the way, and never found anything. Another function of these tunnels is to connect either a castle with something else or two castles. And the example I have is Clune Castle near Innistique in County Kilkenny and the river mentioned there is the Nore. There were two tunnels under the river long ago. People used those tunnels to go from Clune Castle to Innistique, one from Clune Castle to Brownsford Castle. Clune Castle must be Clunamery Castle, a place that had been lost on maps, but which I have added to OpenStreetMap as a result, because it is the only one possible in the vicinity, and it's right across the river from Brownsford Castle. It is one of the examples where the tunnel goes under a river. There are quite a few of those. 
Apart from some castles actually having dungeons or oubliettes, I can't think of any explanation of why castles would be connected by tunnels. Oubliettes are the kind of like dungeons, and it comes from the French oublier, to forget, so you were just put in there and forgotten about. Tower houses like these two examples, Brownsford Castle and Clune Castle, as far as I know, never had oubliettes, and I don't know where that comes from. By this time now, I've come to think that there was a genuine belief that all the major stone-built buildings were connected underground. So if you had two castles, of course there would be a tunnel between the two of them. Another option of what the tunnels could connect are forts, and in this case, fort can mean a ring fort or a fairy fort or whatever you want to call them, or an actual military fort like the English soldiers would have built. The first example is from Clones in County Monaghan. The Old Fort in Clones. About a hundred years ago, there was a great talk about the Old Fort in Clones. An old piper made a bet that there was a tunnel running underneath it, which was used by the Irish to seek refuge when the English soldiers were in their pursuit. He and another man laid the bed. Gating the pipes, he entered the tunnel. The entrance at that time was in a yard owned by men called Parker and Montgomery, and is now owned by Mr. Straton. He played his pipes while entering the tunnel. The people heard the music up to the steps of the Protestant church. Then they died away. Neither he or his pipes were seen after. Before he entered the tunnel, the people wanted to tie a rope around his waist, but he said he would return. There are actually a couple of stories where pipers go to explore tunnels, and it never ends well. And as regards to the fort and clones, I'm not quite sure which one they mean, because there are actually two forts and clones. One is like a ring fort fort, and one is a later fortification, a garrison or something. The question I have is, why would the Irish seek refuge in a tunnel that is leading to a Protestant church? That makes no sense. There are more tunnels in clones, one leading to the convent, where the monks could go to the convent. Who would know why that would be? Another example I have for you is from Danesford in County Kilkenny, and it's called the Old Churchyard. There is an old churchyard between the crossroads of Danesford and the townland of Knock. There is the ruins of an old church in the centre of the yard and... It is said that at certain times of the year, lights flash through the windows. There is also a landlord named Wemis, buried in the right-hand corner of the church. He lived in a house convenient to the church. There are many trees growing around the churchyard. There is a tunnel leading from the church to the fort in Pigeon Park. I haven't identified the townland of Knock near Danes Fort, but I found a graveyard nearby, and I presume it's that one. And... Both examples happen to connect a church with a fort. There are also examples of two forts or fairy forts being connected by a tunnel. Most examples in Waterford fall into that category. First one is from Deer Park in Lismore in County Waterford. In a field in Deer Park, Lismore, County Waterford, there is a fairy fort, and about a mile away from it there is another. It is said that there is an underground tunnel running between them. Around one there is a fence of earth and stones and a gap left for an entrance. Nobody ever went in to explore it. The fence of the other fort was knocked down and ever since, whatever crop is planted in the field, nothing grows where the fence was. It is said that music was heard and lights were seen in the forts. Wild cats were also seen in their neighborhood. Wild cats are actually mentioned in some other stories as well. And this is one of those mentions of music being heard in the fairy fort that you are probably all familiar with. So what is the origin of these tunnels in folklore? When we think about that, we have to think about what kinds of tunnels did people encounter in their daily life, or probably not even their daily life, but maybe just one, and then they used that little information they had to explain the world around them and added more tunnels to their storytelling um, repertoire. So what are the tunnels or underground structures that they came across? Well, mining tunnels would be one option, which I excluded from my search because the number is actually very low. And there's usually not a lot of folklore associated with the ones that I've looked at, at least. The next option, which was my leading theory when I went into this project, was souterrains 
in ring forts and possibly also megalithic tombs because they're always talking about flagstones and it's hard for me to say when I found these places or when I tried to identify these places, are they talking about a ring fort or is it actually a megalithic tomb that might still have part of its mound on top and people didn't go in because they were afraid and they, they didn't really know what it was. Away from the country, basements in an urban environment could also have been an inspiration for tunnel stories. Similar to that, servant tunnels in big houses in the country, which were tunnels that were built leading from servants' quarters or kitchens or outbuildings into the big house when the gentry didn't want their servants to be seen making that journey. So they had underground tunnels, and they do actually exist, and... And I think I heard a story that in some houses the gentry made the servants whistle when they were going through the tunnel, serving food, bringing food from A to B, so they would know that they weren't eating the food or trying off the, uh, from the food. And maybe there's a connection with all the Piper stories as well. Another option which is connected to big houses are ice houses. Dungeons or oubliettes in castles or castle ruins. Usually you don't have access to a castle when it's still inhabited. But if you come across a castle ruin and it might have a dungeon or an oubliette, again, you wouldn't explore it because usually you don't have the, the right equipment with you. But that might, again, further the imagination about these kinds of tunnels and these kinds of structures, built structures. And then also, as I mentioned before, precious metals found in fields, which it has to come from somewhere and it doesn't grow in the soil, so... There must be a tunnel underneath and there might even be holes as i said dug by badgers or rabbits or something and you find the coins at the exits or entrances into these holes and the last option which i almost forgot because it doesn't have any physical trace is that people in the context of the penal laws in cromwell and the english soldiers when somebody said the priest said to go underground that people just took that literally they took that to mean that they actually went to live underground in a tunnel structure. Could be. And now to look into some more examples to prove this theory. The Souterrains, there is one that I actually found in the townland of Ballymacgibbon. The story says it's in Ballymacgibbon, but it's possibly in Ballymacgibbon South, in County Mayo. And we'll hear the story there. Cahar Fater is a cave in the townland of Ballymagibbon. There is an entrance into it, like a doorway with a few steps down. About 30 years ago, boys used to go down into it with a lighted candle. They were afraid to go down far for fear the candle would quench. It has a wall on each side about six feet high. The tunnel is leading to Moitura House. In the year 1865, there was noise heard there, laying a table with forks and knives. Lights were seen at the mouth of it by local people. So we see there, there is a connection between some suturang, they don't call it that, they never call it that, they call it a cave or a tunnel or something like that. And it is connected to a house, allegedly. And if we wanted to explore this more, this correlation between tunnels and suturangs, which first of all we would have to identify the location, which as I said is not that easy. And then we would also have to have reliable data about where the suturans are, which we don't. There are thousands of ringforts recorded on the Historic Environment Viewer, but a much, much, much lower number of suturans. And partly, and it's only my impression, because not all the ringforts with an actual description on the Historic Environment Viewer have been inspected in enough detail to look for a suturan. And many records, including Ringford's, don't, still don't have a detailed description in the database entry. So all it says is the archaeological survey of Ireland is in the process of blah, blah. I've said that before. And we're still waiting to have this database completed, which I kind of beginning to think that it will never be completed. And I don't know how much the school's collection is used by archaeologists as a source, because there are some suturans mentioned in these stories, and I don't know if they go out on their field trips, if they look for them, or if they just record the banks and fosses and everything around that. The outer rings, but not the inside of the ring forts. I don't know how they work. Um, in the three counties that I looked at in detail, 
Mayo had the best number to match my theory about most of these tunnels actually being Sutrans, which doesn't make my theory any truer, of course, because the numbers are so low. It's really no representative data that I have collected. But from the f nine instances of forts in combination with tunnels in the school's collection for County Mayo, five have Sutrans recorded. That is only if I identified the locations correctly. Kilkenny had only two forts in the 27 texts and not a single suit around that I could match up with those two forts. But bear in mind that most of the stories in Kilkenny are from an urban context. Monaghan had six forts and one recorded suit around, but it was not associated with any of these six ring fort stories. But it was actually a cave. It was in the story it was a cave, but in the on the historic environment viewer it's recorded as a suit around. Another option, which I didn't mention before, were crypts or mausoleums. Crypts in churches, of course, are underground, and people might have seen that visiting, either visiting a cathedral. They're more common in cathedrals than in mere parish churches, but they do exist in parish churches. I actually did my first AI search looking for crypts in parish churches, and it gave me this example from Dublin. I don't know any parish churches in Ireland that have crypts, but they must exist. And then the servants' tunnels in big houses. And when the, the servant girls and also, of course, the men came home and reported back to their relatives about these tunnels, that would have triggered the imagination of the people at home. And they must have thought every important building had to have a tunnel. Just pick two major locations in your area and add a tunnel. And you're gonna find someone who knows about this tunnel. I told a friend about this from Abbey Leaks and he said, oh yeah, yeah, we have a tunnel too. There's one from Ahabo Abbey to the Devesi estate in Abbey Leaks, which I think is the longest tunnel I have come across in my research. But I haven't looked at Leash in the school's collection. It might be recorded there as well. I talked to another friend from Abbey Leaks and he said, oh yeah, there's a tunnel from Junamaze somewhere. Of course there is. Because there always is. <laughs> Bound to hear about a story of a tunnel. Basements in an urban environment. Houses in towns often have basements, which must have been really impressive for people from the country living in mud huts with no basements. And obviously, they didn't go on tours of the town's basement, but they might have seen the coal holes and the grids that covered the lights or the entrances into the basements. And more recently, maybe pavement lights. I'll link my video about pavement lights in the corner. And maybe they also saw some of the basements during roadworks or other construction works, and the knowledge about these underground structures fed their imagination that they took back to their village or their farm. If you think back to the story of Mrs. also sometimes Miss Thornton in the Black Abbey, the reader of that story told me that some people used to believe that the Angel's Well, which is near the Black Abbey, it's just across the road really, was an entrance into such a tunnel. It, probably just because it has some steps leading down and the access now is locked, which also might help feed the imagination because lack of access or facts often leads to the imagination going wild. That's how a lot of conspiracy theories start off. In clones in Monaghan, we have such an example where maybe basements are to blame for that story. And I'll read that for you now. There is an underground tunnel in clones. It stretches from the Leonard Arms Hotel to the fort. The people used it for carrying things from the church to the fort when the Danes would come. Again, I don't know which fort is meant here in clones. With Danes, I presume they mean Vikings. I'm not quite sure. But that is a time the Vikings were, if they were ever in clones, uh, it was long before that church was built, which is the Abbey Ruins, just behind the this hotel, Leonard Arms Hotel, which isn't a hotel anymore. According to the National Index of Architectural Heritage, that hotel was built in the 1860s, which is about a thousand years after the Vikings. So when the Vikings came, 
in the 8th, 9th, 10th century, the hotel wasn't built, the church wasn't built. How could there be a tunnel from the hotel to the Protestant church? I don't know. There's no concept of historical chronology in these stories. Another story that has a connection to a basement is this story from the John Moore Caves in County Kilkenny. Another story of the caves is that they are connected by underground passages with the city hall or Tulsil in Kilkenny, about five miles distant from the caves. The passage is supposed to be a tunnel, and the tradition is that the friars occupied the caves in the penal days, and they used the tunnel to reach the city to carry out their sacred duties. Tradition has it also that never once did the Yos find or suspected the tunnel, and this is the general belief in the district of the oldest people now alive. The town hall in Kilkenny or the Tulsil does have a basement. Unfortunately, I haven't been in it, but I have seen it with the trap door or whatever open. Similar to that, there is an alleged connection between the hole in the wall and St. Mary's Church. All these houses have basements, which you can tell by all the pavement lights. The ice houses, they were used by the gens of the big houses to keep certain food items fresh. The ice was often brought up the river to the ice house. I did a video about the one in Woodstock in Innistique. I'll link that in the corner. They were often found some distance away from the house in a wooded area. I believe that they had a gated entrance with a tunnel-like layout. So if you were a poacher or stumbled across one of these for some other reason, you might well start to believe that it was the entrance into some tunnel, which then had to lead somewhere, of course. So you just pick the next prominent building and make the connection, literally. I have an example from Castle Comer, which might have its origin in an ice house. Castle Comer is so called on account of its ancient castle, which stands on a mount by the name of the garrison near to the Bruca River. Comar signifying the meeting of the river Dean and Bruca adjacent to the castle site. Before the invasion of Cromwell, a little village of thatched cabins surrounded the castle, but these as well as the castle were razed to the ground by Cromwell's men on their visit to Castle Comar. They attacked the castle from twelve angles, all of which are to be seen today surrounding the ruins. The ruin can be seen at the end of the domain. This domain is a public park owned by Captain Wandesford. The only remaining portion of the castle is the tower, which stands about 40 feet high and can be seen from the public roads. The main entrance to the tower was approached by steps and was lighted by very small windows which only served as portholes for sighting the attackers. Underneath this castle is a tunnel leading to Castle Comar and to which the inmates of the castle and its garrison escaped during the attack. The garrison in the story is actually in a completely different location than what people thought at the time of the school's collection. An archaeologist that I have mentioned in previous videos, Colleen O'Driscoll, excavated that. It is in Castle Comer, but it's not where it says in the story. And I haven't identified the tower in that story, a 40 feet high tower. You would think that that would be on some ordnance survey map as a tower, but it isn't. Um, but the ice house is marked on the Ordnance Survey map, which, as I said, could be mistaken for an entrance into a tunnel because there's not the best light and you can't see how far in it goes. And I have mentioned sunken trackways as a possibility for an explanation for tunnels as well, that people thought that they are collapsed tunnels. And the example I have is not from the school's collection, but much more recently, I went to an event in Belly Larkin near Freshford this year. That was 2023. And there was a little talk given at Ballylarkin Church Ruin and somebody said this happens at these events. People get talking and they come up with all the lore around the area, the holy wells, uh, whatever have you. And they said, oh, and there's a tunnel from the church ruin down to Kilrush House. I had actually looked at the area on the Historic Environment Viewer and I had seen that there were ancient trackways recorded. So that's what they are. I'll show them to you on the aerial imagery. So they're just an ancient trackway that didn't lead to Kilrush House because Kilrush House wasn't built at the time. And I doubt that the church was built at the time. Well, who knows? It's very difficult to date these trackways, I would think, because you don't get a lot of fines. It's just whatever people lose along the way. And I would presume that some of some other examples are like that as well. And finally, sometimes all it needs is a place name to get the imagination running. 
The example I have for you is, again, from County Kilkenny, from the townland of Moon Veen in South Kilkenny. And the text talks about all the field names in the area. The Pollen Kashlan is another field owned by Mrs. Dunphy. It is situated in Moon Veen on the Kilkenny side of the river shore and opposite Kilmeden railway station. It gets its name from the tunnel that leads under the river to a castle on the opposite side of the river, and it is believed that the entrance to the tunnel was in this field. Again, I don't know which of the fields they are referring to because they haven't been recorded. Oftentimes you get that if a field is called castle field, that it really means that you can see the castle from that field. It is a bit different in this case because of the reference to the hole in the field, but I haven't found a visible hole in the field on aerial imagery, so I don't know what it is referring to. Who knows? But I very much doubt that somebody in the Middle Ages was able to build a tunnel under the river shore that nobody else knows about that is not recorded anywhere else on any ordnance survey map or anywhere. One of the questions I would have is, who built these tunnels? But because it is folklore, you can't really come with reason at these stories. So obviously Cromwell didn't give the monks notice a couple of years earlier and say, okay, I'm going to come there in 1649. Uh, you better start digging some tunnels under your churches and stuff like that. You never get really an answer about these stories when the Cromwellians are involved that the monks actually did dig these tunnels themselves. They were just there and they used them. In some stories, we do have the builders mentioned, and it's usually the Danes. The example I have for you is from Lisarli in County Monaghan. There is a fort in the townland of Lisarli. In the center of the fort is a tunnel covered by a large flagstone. The stone was once lifted up, and there were steps going down to a chamber below. Near the tunnel is a flag. The fort was made, it is said, by the Danes. A man once dug away part of the fort and he came to a very large skeleton in a standing position. When he touched it, it fell to dust. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to identify the townland of Lisarli in County Monaghan. It must be one of those where the name has changed. But the description sounds very much like a suturan or even a megalithic tomb because there is a skeleton in it. I don't know of many cultures that buried their dead standing up. But it's, it's a nice story. And for the most of the time, I've been thinking they meant the Vikings when they were saying Danes, because that's usually what they're called in England in folklore. And you have you have Danes fort in Ireland a lot of times, but you have uh, Dane law in England where the Danes settled, which were actually Vikings. They might not have necessarily all have been Danish, but they spoke Norse, Old Norse. And then I've been thinking maybe it's a corrupted version of the Tuhadi Danan, the people of the goddess of Danu. And if you leave out the people bit, because like you don't say the people of Cromwell, you just say the Cromwellians. So maybe there's some corruption folk etymology going on, and they actually were referring to the Tuhadi Danan, and that was corrupted to the Danes at some point. I don't know if anyone has ever looked into that. That's just something that occurred to me which would date it much earlier than the Danes, and it would maybe go more into the mythological realm of the ring forts or the fairy forts. One other option of who could have built the tunnels is highwaymen or robbers. I haven't really looked a lot into those examples, but I have one example for you there, also from County Monaghan. Sean Barna was a very well-known reparee. He was one of the men who was driven from his home by the English soldiers. He lived in the Sleaf Bay Mountains in County Fermanagh. His chief activities were carried out in the Clogher Road, which runs through the Sleaf Bay Mountains and into Clones. He had many caves into which he put the horses that he stole. There is a long tunnel into them, and at the mouth of this tunnel there is a big flat stone. This stone is part of the rock, and it is not noticeable to any passer-by. The story goes on after that. I just told you the bit until the tunnel is mentioned. It is impossible for me to locate that. He was a very good robber to hide his stuff. But it is quite possible that there are caves in those mountains. And I hope I haven't butchered too many Irish names videos so far. I'm trying, learning. 
So I hope that hasn't destroyed your belief in folklore completely. They all make for great stories, and I'm not trying to rob Ireland of their folklore. I'm just thinking, before you spread all these stories, or spread them with the note saying people in the past believed that there was a tunnel, when you can actually look at the historic environment viewer and sometimes find explanations for that, and maybe give that explanation while you're telling the story. Because they're, oftentimes they are recorded monuments and you shouldn't be digging into them, which you might be tempted to do if there's a story about a gold treasure, so maybe not digging, but metal detecting, which is still illegal without an archaeological excavation license. So if you know of these stories, go and follow up on them on the Historic Environment Viewer if you can, and maybe you will find out that there's actually another interesting story, like a megalithic tomb or a souterrain or something like that. And keep the memory alive in the folklore story, but take it with a bucket of salt, I would say. Thanks for watching and listening. Hope that was interesting and maybe even a bit entertaining to you. And if you missed the mapping, I'm fairly sure the next video will contain a lot more mapping again. Slangofor!